We all pot down here. Kong Jiam Kong Po Jiam Jiam Shiga. Welcome to We All Pod Down Here. I'm Dan. And I'm Brittany. And God, I hope I didn't butcher the pronunciation in that quote, but in English that translates to the Konjiam Horror Experience Begins Now, which, if that's not obvious, is going to be a quote from Konjiam Haunted Asylum, which came out in 2018. And a quick overview, it's about a horror web series that pays a visit to an abandoned asylum. What will they find? And will it be more frightening than anything that they could even imagine? And our references are, as usual, Wikipedia and IMDB, as well as BNN Travel Article. All right, and then I'm actually going to be the one doing the casting crew today since I've taken some lessons in Korean. And again, please, for the love of God, forgive me if I mispronounce some of this stuff. You've been working really hard at this. Well, I've been studying Korean for a while, so again, I've If I mispronounce any of it, I truly apologize, but I'm going to attempt this, so bear with me. All right, so for our cast and crew, we have our director, Chung Bong Shi. Our producer was Him Ong Go, and our writers were Chung Bong Shi and Park Song Ming. So kind of a fun thing for our cast is, like with most found footage films, most of them use their real names throughout this. And for our cast, we have Jihan, who is played by Park Jihan. And then we have Charlotte. Charlotte actually is, I think, pretty much the only one that didn't use her real name as her character name. But her real name is Mong Eun. And then we have Sung Woo, who is played by Lee Sung Woo. We have Ion, who is played by Oh Ion. We have Sung Hoon, who is played by Park Sung Hoon. We have Ha Jun, who is played by Wei Ha Jun. Um, fun fact, he actually was in Squid Game. He was the one of the police officers. But he's pretty much our main character in this one. Although they're all kind of main characters, but he's kind of like, I guess, the ringleader. And next we have Jaeon, who was played by Oh Jaeon. And last, but certainly not least, we have the hospital director slash ghost, who was played by Pak Jia. And with that, again, apologies if I butchered any of the names, but I did my best. I think you did a great job. Thank you. So let's get into our spoiler-free review. Dan, you want to kick us off? Sure, I can get us rolling. So for me, the genre of found footage films has become really, really oversaturated. That's resulted in a lot of filler. Even the the movie, of course, that really popularized the idea of like spirits and stuff like that in a found footage style paranormal activity. I thought that movie was hot trash. And... There hasn't been a whole lot in that genre that has really been all that great for me, at least. Most of it's just been really uninteresting. However, we have this gem coming in. It is anything but. It is fantastic. You know, the build is really well crafted. The characters aren't usual throwaways you don't give a crap about. And it's really genuinely frightening. Like, there are moments where it it got me, for sure. Mm -hmm. It also does a lot of the familiar kinds of things you'd expect in a found footage film much better and much much more sensible than most and it also adds a lot of really cool twists that we'll get into with our spoiler filled reviews there's a lot of cool twists in this it also really has a grounded sense of place and reality with of course the location being based on a real abandoned asylum in South Korea of the same name. And really, if you want to do a found footage movie, if you want something that should be viewed as the genre standard on how works of this ilk are judged, this is the movie. This is the standard bearer from what I've seen. Definite classic for me. Yeah, and so for me, for found footage style movies, I actually don't hate Paranormal Activity, like the first one. And I think that the other three actually kind of tied together better. Now I haven't seen anything past the third one, and I've heard it kind of really goes downhill from there. But for me, I like that I give a lot of found footage movies credits because a lot of them do go on a shoestring budget for it. So like Blair Witch Project, again, very st- shoestring budget. First Paranormal Activity was an absolute shoestring budget kind that of movie. That was like a no-budget movie. Yeah, they had almost no budget. All the actors had to renegotiate their contracts because it like blew up more than anyone ever thought it would. You know, and I give credit to Blair Witch for again doing the whole thing of let's make this seem like it really happened to the point that and I've talked about before that a lot of the actors' parents were getting phone calls with people trying to help find these kids 
Blair Witch was genuinely really good for me. Yeah, it and, was really interesting. And even in like today's modern standard, I know a lot of people like to hate on it, but I will fight them to the death. That is a hill I will die on. <laughs> and it's and ironically, there's a in Burkittsville, there's one of those spook hills where the you know, the car goes up the hill. Mm-hmm. So like I will die. I will die. I will die on that spook hill. Rolling up that hill. <laughs> yes, because I just feel like that it's something you could never do nowadays. And I still give it a lot of credit for the fact that it was able to pull off that kind of crazy stunt. And that the whole, at the film festival they had, like they were handing out posters, like trying to act like they're trying to find these kids. I mean, they really went all out with that. So, and really that no one had ever attempted anything quite like they did at that time. Yeah. The closest thing would be cannibal Holocaust really, which as much as I'll hate on that movie, it still has its place in history for that kind of style. It certainly does. There is a handful of other things I think that you could argue came out before that, but for like horror, I believe that in the horror realm, that's the first one. Yeah. What was the one with, um, that was like a found footage with like the kind of the, the Godzilla like monster. Oh, Cloverfield? We, Cloverfield, that's it. Cloverfield came out on my birthday and I went and saw it on my birthday. I saw it on opening day too and my head hurt like crazy afterwards because it jumped around so it's, much it's very it's a tough watch difficult to watch that in theaters mm-hmm. so like we all my friends and i we all went to like denny's or something afterwards because nothing like a garbage movie than eating garbage barely food and we had to take like we're just sitting there we're like i can't see straight <laughs> i really don't want to eat right now. <laughs> i'm glad that i didn't see blair witch in theaters i was too young to see it in theaters i think i was like Nine or ten when it came out. I was ten. I, I didn't 99. see it until a couple of years after it came out. I didn't see it until a couple of years later. And of course, I saw it like while we lived basically in Burkittsville. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Blair Witch right over the hill there. So, yeah. Anyway, so back to this movie though. Most movies don't scare me. And you know this, like, mm-hmm. especially when I was a kid, especially creature feature kind of stuff really freaked me the fuck out. And of all things, like, I loved Godzilla as a kid. And when the commercials came out for the one, the, what's the Matthew Broderick? Yeah, the Matthew Broderick, I think it was 1998. Yeah. That year that, so that's the year my dad died. That year that came out, I remember all the commercials for it leading up to it. And for some reason, it freaked me out because I always saw Godzilla as a kid as like almost like the anti hero, like kind of like mm-hmm. a Deadpool kind of situation where he was kind of like the hero, though, because he was, you know, coming out of that and he wasn't an overgrown iguana or whatever the Matthew Broderick one was. was Actually, all, to this day, I've never seen that one. I've seen it both, like, regular version and the Rift Tracks version. The I would Rift like to Tracks watch the Rift Tracks version. Fantastic. I would like to watch so the Rift Tracks version. Because it just, I don't know, from everything I know of it, it's going to bug the shit out of me when I watch it finally. It's but essentially... You know, the typical, let's make a big budget action flick out of this. A big budget, Americanized, stupid, dumbass action flick. Yeah. That has no merit, doesn't make any sense. And it makes Godzilla the villain, where like you said, he's the anti-hero. And he's much more cartoonish and whatnot. Like, if you want to see a good modern take on Godzilla, watch the watch Shin Godzilla. The Japanese that movie. one was really good. That was fantastic. Even the newer ones, I still like for what they are. They're they're much better than the the ninety eight one. Well, because at least those kind of harken back to the original image, and it mm-hmm. again, it feels like that Godzilla kind of comes to set things right. Yeah. Whereas that one was just let's just make a monster movie kind of thing. It's just like a monster invading into a place it doesn't really know kind of thing. It's like a giant dinosaur, yeah. essentially just stomping around. Yeah, and, and that's what, that dumb. was kind of like. Well, and also the thing with Godzilla is I feel like Godzilla is meant to be, what's the word I'm looking for? He's meant to be... The anti-hero. Well, he's meant to be the anti-hero, but he's meant to be like this... Like a, like a like nature balance kind of thing. Well, right? a nature balance, but also he's meant to be like, you know, not necessarily intentionally crashing into stuff and harming things. It's just the fact that he's so big. And it's like with Mothra, when Mothra comes in, Mothra is going to save the two little fairy girls Mothra is not trying to harm people. She's just trying to save the fairies that she's supposed to save. But because she's so fucking huge, and when her wings beat, you know, it's practically making like tornadoes and shit everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of those just didn't feel as scary to me because it felt like, yeah, there's death and destruction, but it's not deliberate. So I guess it didn't, like, I loved Godzilla as a kid up until the 98 one. 
And of course, then right after my dad died, I remember as a kid being like, dad always had to protect me from Godzilla and he's not here to protect me anymore. And like, I, my poor mother, I don't even imagine the bullshit she had to put up with with my, my being afraid of everything. And yet I continue to watch everything. She's like, why? Why do you keep watching stuff that scares you? (laughs) You know, the worst thing that came out of that 98 Godzilla, the soundtrack. I've not listened to it. Holy garbage. You know, it's one good thing that came out of it. The Taco Bell commercials. Those were funny. And I never saw the one, but like I think I've said it before, my dad thought it was so funny where the dog was sitting there, a little Taco Bell dog, a little chihuahua was sitting there with like a box with like a stick and a string. And he's going, he lizard, 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 oh lizard. God. And then you see Godzilla shouting, he goes, uh-oh, I think I'm going to need a bigger box. Oh my God. Literally, oh my God. Yeah, so, oh my God, Zilla. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, that soundtrack... Everyone's turned that off now. They're, they're all yeah. like, like, you've ruined this show. <laughs> that soundtrack was so brutal. Like At least they, Armageddon has a good soundtrack. That That's debatable. I like some of those songs. So they P. Diddy totally ruined a Led Zeppelin song. Oh, well, that's upsetting. Yeah, and Jimmy Page was... It was Jimmy Page and P. Diddy. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, just, it was just awful. It was one of the worst abominations of music ever yeah so it actually fit with the movie but let's let's yeah, transition back, back, away from back to terrible Con- americanized godzilla remakes yeah so back to congium so again most movies don't scare me as, as an adult like i just i watch movies that are scary all the time and yeah some things give me some like jump scares or they'll startle me or the images gross me out but not much truly gets to me anymore. It doesn't stick with you. No. This movie scared the shit out of me. I can, fright- I can second that because it, I was witness to that. <laughs> yeah, it frightened me to my fucking core. I mean, I remember parts of it and I was just like, nope, nightmare fuel for fucking ever. Mm-hmm. So I'd encourage everyone to watch this, though, without reading any of the overviews because... I noticed that a lot of the streaming services have kind of a key plot point they give away that I would have preferred not to have known going into this. Yeah. It doesn't change my enjoyment of the film. I just encourage people not to read that. Like Frank Costanza, I gotta go in fresh. Yeah, exactly. But one of the things I really enjoyed about this, they bring up in it that they all talk about that these people are getting together because they read this CNN travel like blog that said the seven freakiest places on earth and uh, we actually, the seven freakiest places on Earth ball article or whatever doesn't exist anymore, as far as I could tell. But the Wayback Machine found it. So it I f- exists in the ether. Yep. So I found it because there is a top 10 that's out now. But for the top seven, they changed the list slightly. So the things that are on the top seven are the Chernobyl Amusement Park in the Ukraine, the Sedlish Ossuary. In the Czech Republic, the Aokiyagahara Forest in Japan, the Fetish Market in Togo, the La Isla de las Monecas in Mexico, the Battleship Island in Japan, and of course, the movie's namesake, the Konjiham Psychiatric Hospital, of course, in Korea. South Korea. We're not in North Korea. No. Definitely not. There's no, there, there's no there's no psych hospitals, I think, in North Korea. The the only films allowed there are probably propaganda films. Probably. But so on the top ten list, the main thing they changed was that the Aokigahara forest is actually removed, which I kinda wonder if that's because of that asshole that went in there. Just talk about disrespectful and, and outright and we've, clueless. We've ranted about it before. I'm not going to. Yeah. But of the things they included on the list now, so everything else is the same aside from the fact that the Aokigahara forest is all gone. They do now have the catacombs in Paris, France, which we've been to and fucking love. We also have been to the Sesla Ossuary. That uh, was an experience. Yeah, both of those. If you don't like seeing bones, don't go to these places because yeah. basically these places are practically made of bones. So the place smells so musty. What the catacombs? No, the ossuary. It, it remember that had that very distinct yeah, kind it, of. It does because and basically stench. I guess the legend behind it is there was a semi-blind monk that basically mm-hmm. took like, all these bones and just like made things out of them. So like the family's crest has been made out of bones mm-hmm. and it uses every bone in the human body for mm-hmm. the chandelier. I think there was also a story about. A, uh, I think a priest there or something had gone to Jerusalem and brought back some dirt that supposedly had some sort of like like from cr- Jesus's grave yeah, or something. Yeah, some like Christian meeting or something, and all these people wanted to be buried in it. Ah, uh, so that would, make sense. that would 
explained why they had so many skeletons. Yeah, but it's it's very awesome to go see. I highly recommend it if you get a chance. Yeah, the people who who are there, it's it's a very serious thing. Like they take it very seriously, and they've done a great job of preserving it. And it's you know got a like a great historical context, and it's one of those things where you can look at all the pictures, and we have some awesome pictures that we've taken. I'll when try we to went post there. some of those. Actually, I, fe- I feature a lot of them on like our website and stuff like yeah. that. I have like photos mm-hmm. of, from other skulls on our website. But there's nothing like seeing it in person. And oh, yeah. it's not the easiest place to get to no. in the Czech Republic we- unless you have a car or you get a really, really great Uber driver like we did. Yeah, our Uber driver was awesome. He took us there and then waited for us and then took us back. Yeah, because getting back was tricky because cars wouldn't pick you up and take you back to Prague. Yeah. It was about like an hour outside of Prague. Yeah, so. but highly, highly recommend if you get a chance to go there. Uh, and again, also highly recommend the catacombs. If you do go there, though, you have to go early because mm-hmm. almost without fail, it seems like every day they turn people away. We were in the, like, the last, we were like, I think the we second the la- to last we were, the, people. we were the last group. It was the last group. I think we were the second to last people they let mm-hmm. in. Like at the pers- people after us and then after that, it was cut off. So yeah, like, I like, well, remember us and like some of the last people were like, yay, we made it. <laughs> I know. It was because the year before we weren't able to go to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you get a chance to go there, highly, highly recommend it. There's so many cool yeah. things there. And with that, we should also maybe sometime soon review as above so below since that's pretty much the only movie that's ever been allowed to film in the yeah. films and a really great movie and very yeah. underrated and it was much better than either of us expected yeah for sure so of the other things that are on the list for the top 10 now there is and correct me if i'm wrong in the pronunciation of this for the island in italy i believe it's pronounced Pavilla. and then there's the Devarza center or otherwise better known as the gateway to hell in turkmenistan i want to see that we so have found bad. a place that has a good tour group that we know someone that went there and so we're gonna try to do that semi soon because the president of turkmenistan wants to extinguish the crater so we're hoping to go before that happens and one of their major exports is natural gas yeah. and you know that's their economy you know could really use that boost so i understand the the logic behind oh, like oh well, sure. it's burning up all this natural gas that we could be exporting and helping our economy oh, makes sure. sense it just would be but I still want really to go see it. Really terrible to see that go away, and I want to see it before it yeah, happens. Yeah, exactly. Let's just like my thing is okay. We get there before it happens. Take some cool photos. But apparently, I guess when you go there, you camp there overnight because they say during the day it just kind of looks like it's smoking, but at night they say like the glow from it is one of the yeah. coolest things you've ever seen. I think it's gonna be really difficult to put that out too. It's like kind of trying to put the fire out in Centralia. Good yeah, luck. you're gonna have trouble. Play. Uh, they, they've I think they've tried to. Put they have one out. tried a few times and it hasn't worked. Yeah, they gave up a while back. And last but not least is the Bell Witch Cave in Tennessee. So for our Americans, not a difficult one to go to. No. I don't know how comfortable I'd feel going to that cave, though, because yeah. the Legend of the Bell Witch, a lot of it is very creepy to me. So if you haven't heard the Legend of the Bell Witch, there's a couple of good documentaries on it. Quite a few podcasts have done it. I believe that Seth Breedlove did one about it, which if you like cryptids and spooky stuff like that and you like documentaries... Go look up Seth Breedlove on Amazon Prime because he has so much stuff on there. Yeah, he does. Or better yet, go to his website and buy it from him directly if you want to really support him. But but otherwise, if you just want to check it out and see if it's something you would like, highly recommend that. Did Astonishing Legends cover that? Uh, I believe they I did. I thought they did. Most of the like paranormal podcasts have at least touched on it. Yeah. But back to the actual movie, because I'm going to get so fucking sidetracked this episode. Well, it's a cool thing because talking, you know, talking about all these real-life locations— and I love when a movie uses a real life location and makes something really cool out of it instead of something cliched and stupid. Yeah. They did a really nice job of taking a real life location that's genuinely creepy and making you feel genuinely creepy and creeped out by it. So they did a really nice job and did justice to the actual site. Yeah. So for back to the movie though, like I said, the sun settled me. And just scared me so bad. And it's a story that really feels realistic. Like, kind of like the Deep House, I could easily see people going there and doing these kinds of stupid stunts to for views, you know, for online views. And to try to make money on their views. Difference is that these folks were insanely prepared. Not that the Deep House, they weren't prepared. Like, they had obviously a lot of really good equipment. But they had like a GoPro where it was watching their face while also watching what was in front of them while doing it on a live stream with the, you know, they had the drone overhead. They have the guy monitoring it. He's sitting there in front of the computer and, you know, making sure everything's going off without a hitch. 
But again, it's a live stream, so it's not like the other ones where they can just go back and edit it later. Like they're just mm-hmm. live streaming this. You're doing this on the fly. It's live t- TV or live web TV or whatever. Yeah. So with that, I think that's all I want to say for my spoiler-free review of it. Other than just reiterate, highly recommend you go watch this. I also would recommend you don't read the descriptions online. Don't listen to any more of our podcasts until yeah. you've watched it and then come back and listen to it because you don't want this spoiled. It's on Prime Video, correct? I believe it's on Shudder. Shudder, that's right. Which is kind of Prime Video. Yeah, so. we have it through Prime Video. But with that... Shall we get into our spoiler alert, spoiler filled review? I believe so. Spoiler alert. Yep. All right. So, you want me to kick it off? Or are you feeling it? Go for it. So, for the spoiler stuff, one of the things that gets spoiled by the descriptions online is that they tell you that basically the main three, three people I believe that are that are in on this have kind of rigged a lot of this place. Yeah. Like with they they set it up to it was they were the main trio who run this channel, but they brought in some new people who had, you know, no idea what was actually going on kind of thing. So they could bring in people who would get genuine reactions out of this. Yeah, and so they've pretty much set this place up, though, to make sure that stuff happens. They've set it up to have various things to move, things to, you know, like they have a thing where they're doing a seance and the bells jingle and stuff like that. So the way they word it in, like, the actual descriptions on, like, Amazon Prime and stuff as they say that in there. And I'm thinking it's like established up front about that. No, you don't find that out till like towards the end. So I was like, that's sort of last third of the movie. You don't find out that some of it was staged, but they're saying like, we didn't set this up. This happened and they're freaked. Yeah. And it's like, I kind of would have liked to have not known that because I think that would have made it more like, oh, what the fuck? Some of this was staged. I didn't even really read that description. So I came in kind of like, guessing that they might do something like are these guys going to set something up to stage this or is is it going to be all real or what and it kind of you know if you don't read that description you're kind of guessing a little bit which is cool yeah because like the whole it's stage thing just i think turns the whole thing on its head and not knowing that i think would have been kind mm-hmm. of fun and that was a great twist and yeah. i think it was it, it was really smart how they how they revealed that and how they set that up because they had the two the one guy who was kind of at the control center, the other two went in first, you know, set up cameras and stuff. They were also setting up all the tricks. Yeah. The other thing that's kind of, a, this is actually a minor criticism I had to the movie, is that Charlotte at one point spray paints the wall and says that she tags all the places she's been to. And she's been to, she made a comment earlier saying that had she been to the Selish Ossuary. And I'm going to call bullshit on that right now because this is a church that's pretty well guarded, and when you're in the area with, like, all the bones, there's no fucking way you could do anything more it's, than, like, put some lint on the ground. It's actually really small. It's not very big. It's not like this cavernous space where you might be able to slip by. No, it's actually a very small yeah, church. Yeah, it's not, not like the catacombs where yeah. it's, like, there's all these corridors and stuff. No, this is a small—this is a room in a church. Like, it's a big room, but it's a basically, like, a, ro- a room in the basement of this church. Mm-hmm. And on the outside, you know, there's graves and everything. So unless you're defacing graves or defacing this church, there's no fucking way you could have done more than, like, drop a penny or something yeah. stupid on the ground. Her only chance would have been to have done something outside when so, you, you could kind of walk around the graveyard with pretty much no supervision. But once you're inside, if you're going to mark something inside, we can, like, slap a sticker on something. Yeah, Even then, they'll probably notice you because there's a lot of workers there. They take the preservation very seriously. Yeah, you're not allowed to touch it, you know, so... Again, I call bullshit on that part, but that's a very a very minor criticism, but I will throw that out there. Now, I could see, obviously, if you're going to Chernobyl and stuff like that, yeah, you can probably spray paint something. Yeah. A lot of people have. And you know what? I, it There's doesn't... so much graffiti there already that I'm you might not even notice the difference. I'm still mad that they got rid of the graffiti highway going up to Centralia. Yeah. Because there was a highway leading up to there that people put graffiti all fucking over, and it looked really cool, and they like paved over it with like a ton of dirt so that it's all gone now. Yep. And I was like, why you got to ruin that? Just let people go be dumb and spray paint the highway. I mean, at that point, not like anyone's really using it. So No, no one's using it. It's a blocked off road. You can't go do anything other than literally walk on this road. And I realized that, you know, there are parts of it that could be dangerous, but block off the dangerous parts and let people still spray paint the other parts. Didn't Wally fun. go there? I think he did, didn't rode his bike through that tunnel. And- Probably. I'll check with him if he went there. If so, I'll see if we can, like, link his one of his videos from it. Yeah. I don't I think it might have been before he was doing videos, but. I'll, I'll check with him. We should have him on to talk about it. Yeah. That would be fun. Did they, maybe there's a movie. Is there any movies about Centralia? I don't, I don't know. I don't think there I is. Mean, well, uh, like I was, <laughs> Silent the obvious Hill Silent Hill is inspired, kind of inspired by, by it. Inspired by it, but but that was obviously the game. Play, first. play, play the game. The movie was 
okay. I like the movie for what it is. The game is so much I don't know if I could handle playing the game. Oh, man. I played the game in the dark, no no lights on, intentionally, and... Boy, did that game creep the crap out of me. I still love that image of that guy that was on, suppose it could be all stage, but it was funny, the idea of that island where that mist rolled in. Mm-hmm. And then the guy looked out his window and there was a guy just standing there, like dressed as like the pyramid head. Oh yeah, that was funny. And like someone saw it and was just like, what the shit? I was like, I don't know if this is real or if it was just staged, but it doesn't matter because it, it was funny. It's funny anyway, so yeah. I'm good with the result. But again, back to the movie for this. So so for me, I think one of the things that freaked me out the most wasn't just, there was like little things that happened that you were kind of like, ah, ah, and like a little nerve wrack. But the scene where I believe it's Charlotte and I forget who the other girl was that was running away. It was Charlotte and one it of the other. It was Charlotte and one of the other girls and the other girl got possessed. Yeah. And her eyes turned solid black. So it reminds me of like, first of all, the whole black eyed kid thing freaks mm-hmm. me out to begin with. Yeah. And the sound she fucking makes is like, I <laughs> Yeah. It's like this really fast whisper. It was like, it it reminded me of uh, Hannibal Lecter going. (laughs) The fava beans. The fava beans and a nice bottle of Kian tea. (laughs) But this was like 10,000 times creepier. It was just her. And the thing is like, the worst part was like when she goes up to her, because they're kind of like running through the woods trying to get away and they keep passing by the same spot where they had a marker. And the marker that was underwear, which is really funny. Yeah. Like, I like that there were some humorous moments, there, especially, like, before oh, they get sure. started. There's a lot of, like, little funny things that happen. But when they're running through the woods, you know, and you see that she's just standing there and, like, not moving, you know something's going to happen. Like, it's not like this is going to be a surprise scare. And I've actually seen that image on the internet before, like, the blackout eyes and everything, mm-hmm. like, that exact one. But I wasn't prepared for the sound that she was going to make. That just was fucking unsettling to no fucking end. I think that was the moment I screamed it. I was just it like, was. I was like, I was like, nightmare fuel for fucking ever the rest of my life. Goodbye. That was genuinely creepy. I kind of chuckled at it a little bit to kind of like, <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> yeah, you tend, you seem like if you get scared, you chuckle. Yeah. You chuckle when you're scared. I, I go the humor route. My problem is if I'm in like a haunted house or something like that, like the fake ones, like, you know, like something like Halloween Horror Nights, I've hit people. Your, your fight or flight reaction is always fight. Now, it's usually like fight and then immediately flight. I remember when I was a kid, my mom's work had some kind of like haunted thing that they sent us through as kids. And they're just, you know, teenagers that would jump Basic out. And they were stuff. like, boo, you know, like it wasn't anything horrific. It wasn't like the time that... In elementary school, for whatever reason, a nature center near us had a haunted trail. And I'm thinking haunted trail, there's going to be a couple of scares here and there. No, they had people with goddamn chainsaws jumping out of trees and chasing us. <laughs> I was in fourth grade. Oh I was God. terrified. I wouldn't do that to a fourth grader. Yeah. No, this was like a group of kids and we went on the quote unquote scary trail. My brother went on like the happy trail and they had the quote unquote werewolf puppies that were like, I think they were something like Czechoslovakian Vox that... Or something along those lines, or Tamascan wolf dogs, something where they looked mm-hmm. like wolves but weren't. And they had these puppies they were playing with. I'm like, you got to go play with fucking puppies. And I got chased by people with chainsaws. They had a thing where they had like the Undertaker supposed to be like taking stuff out of the ground. And there are these two people in this mask. And then, like, while you're watching, all of a sudden these people come down the hill with like these. And obviously they had the blades taken off and everything, but they make the sound chasing us, like fucking chasing us. Like, oh my God. Wait, the Undertaker was there, so Mark Calloway. No, not up. Mark, not that. Under- <laughs> not the not the wrestling Undertaker, did but like, did he throw somebody in a casket and go rest in peace? Jesus Christ, he should have. But <laughs> but yeah, so if th- you see like some guy just pile driving somebody, <laughs> that'd be really fun. That, see, that'd been funny, but no, no. Instead, we had to be scared out of our fucking minds. Chainsaws, fuck that! I want the puppy trail. Yeah, I know. I was like looking back. I was like, there was a puppy trail. I could have gone and played with puppies. But no, I went on the scary trail because I wanted to be a badass. There was some spots we got candy. There was like also like a tunnel you went through, and there was all these hands hanging down. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one grabbed my like our head. Like so, they like some of the hands were fake and some were real, and they would just grab you. Like jeez, like this was like no fucking joke. That's... Now, now there was a haunted hayride I went on as an adult, and. For whatever reason, they must have run out of, like, what they decided were scary costumes for this haunted hayride. Oh, no. So there was a dude dressed up, and he's like, and here comes my pet, the armadillo. And it was, like, this weird, creepy armadillo giant costume. They had, like, the teeth and stuff. But I remember just looking, I was like, I'm sorry, the armadillo? And all I can think of is, like, friends, like, with the Hanukkah armadillo thing Mm -hmm. that... uh, 
the Ross does. Wow. Yeah. So, the, the, but the, again, backing up to the time I went on my mom, through the one through my mom's work, there was some teenager that jumped out and scared me. I smacked her in the face and, and she was like, she hit me. And I was like, shit, I'm in trouble. And I just like took <laughs> off. I was like, it's so, like when you and I went on that, the one in Hong Kong where we did the one at Disney, I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I kept my hands like, in my pockets the yeah. entire time because I was so afraid I was going to hit somebody. That one wasn't that bad. No, once we'd gone through it, I was like, okay, I can handle this. And I went through the second time without issue. Yeah. But it was really entertaining. Oh, yeah, it was great. But I'm just saying, like, I don't, if something jumps out at me, I think my first reaction is like hit and then run. Yeah. So it's like a combo of fight and flight. I think that it was called the nightmare experiment when we saw it. It was, yes. And I think that was probably the most off the wall, out of left field thing I've ever seen in a Disney park. And also one of the coolest. Yeah. For sure. But back to the movie. But so shortly after, you know, Charlotte gets obviously the fuck scared out of her by the possessed girl. She wakes up in what you quickly deduced was the ominous room 402. Mm -hmm. And there's a naked guy there that looks like he is straight out of Silent Hill. And I think that's also when I was like, more Nightmare Fuel forever because the way his hands are twisted and he's Mm -hmm. just slowly moving. And I've noticed this about Japanese and Korean horror movies. They are really, really good at like the body horror of like things moving in unnatural ways. Like you think of like Juan and where the yeah. where she's coming down the stairs and it's just and like in Train to Busan where you like the zombie gets up and it just like cracks in weird other ways and yeah. it's just I've noticed they're very, very good at that and it scares me a lot. There's I don't a, like it. I, I like it, of, I like it, but I don't like it. There's you know? a lot of attention to detail there. I think. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that makes movies like this stand out from a lot of others is that they really take all the little things seriously, which adds up to something that ends up being really awesome because they really pay attention to the small details. And this is a movie that really ramps up really quick. I mean, the staging is really elaborate. Like you mentioned earlier, they set up all of these fancy cameras. I mean, they've got a some hardcore equipment here. Yeah, for sure. And once things start going off the rails, they go off the rails in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Like it just goes up to 11 instantaneously. And, you know, like a lot of the characters I experienced as Charlotte was acting very nonchalant and stuff like that. She went from zero to freaked out. So fast. If I remember correctly, when she did her, tagging of her name Mm -hmm. on the wall below it there was a thing that said something about like lives or alive or something Mm -hmm. like that and it changes and it changes to like dead or dies or something Mm -hmm. like that and like they had to go back through the cameras and they're trying to figure out did it really change Mm -hmm. and it did and they're trying to figure out like how the hell this happened because again the people staging this don't think anything bad's going to happen and the guy in the control center says no it was the same even though and and you show they show the images side to side but he's different yeah but he does it to stop because he's trying to stop them from leaving Mm because he knows if he tells them it changed they're gonna freak out and bail and throughout the whole movie they keep showing they're getting all these viewers and their goal is to hit a million viewers yeah and they're getting there they're real close and and at one point like because he's in like this weird tent thing and they have it set up with like you know food and stuff all of a sudden behind him one of the things lights on fire mm-hmm. and the hot just, plate this lights up and then all the power goes out and he's just like fuck no and like gets everything back on and at one point he finally has to run in because basically everyone's like getting ready to bail mm-hmm. or how already has bailed yeah bailed but then apparently got thrown right back into it because like yeah. i said because charlotte's sitting there again with that thing with the hands and the worst part i think this is one of the things they do very well is that in a lot of modern horror i feel like things just like rush at you and try to scare you whereas this has her turning and looking you just see it slowly kind of sliding to the side and moving with her and just like the anticipation just builds and builds and builds and you're just like fuck this thing isn't even coming after it's just there and she has to try to sneak the fuck away from it like yeah Eventually it comes after her, but it's just like the whole time is just like, it's just like slowly moving with these little twisted hands. And it's just like, yeah. and she has to, it's pitch dark in you. So you can see her face and then see what's in front of her. So you're like, you see her like turning to look at. Cause they have the, the light, the camera lights that shine on their face. Yeah. So, so the you're only seeing that part of it and everything else is dark. Yeah. And like what's in front of her is lit yeah. up, but she has to like, you know, move and try to like sneak away from this mm-hmm. thing but the light's shining on so she has to like sneak and then it's like sliding slowly with her mm-hmm. it's doing this little like creepy cha-cha slide <laughs> slide to the left oh god actually it was sliding to the right but that's besides the point i hate that song <laughs> i know you do that's why i had to say it i know 
but they also they're in that room 402 and they see there's like there's no doors there's no way out there's no way in do you think they should have done the room as 420 no i feel like that if there was ever like a like a scary movie you know where they as to mock it they should have had well, it be like course. room 420 and, and, they open it just, up and it's just, just like it's just weed like, everywhere it's like a vw van just open <laughs> it up and all the, the big cloud of smoke comes out of it yep that would have been good in a parody for no, no this. Okay, i'm very glad they didn't do that no no i agree but i just I, I kept thinking of that when i saw this poor or i'm like hey you could just reverse that we could have had a, a joke movie yeah but a lot of the way things happen in this movie are very hard to predict because it moves at such a pace and it leaves a lot to the imagination in a, in the best way. As a result, it gets genuinely really scary. Mm-hmm. And they got all the details right, but they also crafted a really good story arc. And everything just was really kismet. It all came together and made something really special. And this movie gave me hope in this genre where there wasn't much left for me. Yeah. Now, granted, I'm not going to get uber excited about the next generalized one that comes around because most of them are terrible but yeah this is the standard bearer this is the one yeah it's so freaking good one thing i've noticed also that i was curious what your thought was on this when the scene where they the girl put or she puts her arm through like that they look what were they supposed to be? They were supposed to be like calm down boxes or something. They were those boxes where you yeah, could just see like, like isolation boxes or something for people who are like like patients that were like violent or something. Like they locked them in there. Yeah, which that's not a good idea to begin no. with, but that's not a great treatment plan. But, but this <laughs> hospital was from like the era of when these kinds of treatments for things like this were really, really fucked. Yeah. And they also had made comments about like early on telling you about the history of this hospital, that there were suicides mm-hmm. there, and that like head of the hospital, they believed, I guess, she could have been part of all this. Mm-hmm. But the scene, though, where the one guy reaches and he thinks something grabbed his hand, and clearly it's like part of the the prank they're pulling. Yeah. And she insists on reaching her hand in there, and they're freaking out trying to get her not to, because I think they realize that... She's going to find the, the fake thing. That is not real. And so, but she finally reaches her hand through, and of course, you see the way that her arm gets, like, something pulls her arm, and she mm-hmm. gets this huge scratch on it. But the girl who was doing the acting, like the actress, I wonder if she knew it was going to happen, but didn't know when. Because she looks genuinely scared when it happens, like, at least startled, you know? Yeah. Either she did a really good acting do- job, or they really got her. Yeah. No, they, I could easily see it being like, even if you know something's coming, and it happens, it'll still startle you. Mm-hmm. So, But I kind of wonder if that was, that she didn't even know what it was because It's not like someone tapped her hand for her, like, ready? They finally just grabbed her arm and pulled her, because she looks like she legitimately gets pulled oh, against yeah. there. And, like, man, that would startle me to no fucking end. Oh, for sure. And like you mentioned, the they talk a lot, about, a lot about the history of this place. Unfortunately, when they actually made this, they were unable to film in the real hospital. They were not given the permission from the South Korean government to do so. And all the hospital scenes were filmed at the, the National Maritime High School in Busan. But there was no train involved. And we don't know there's no train. Maybe they took a train there. Maybe they did. We can only hope. So they weren't stuck with a bunch of rage virus things. I feel like we would have heard about that. Yeah, probably. And in using that that high school in Busan, they stuck to the real floor plan of the hospital as much as they could so they could recreate it accurately. Again, attention to detail. Yeah. This is also the third most watched South Korean horror film, which yeah. is really impressive. The top two are Phone and A Tale of Two Sisters. Those are one and two. I want to see A Tale of Two Sisters because that's what The Uninvited yeah. was based on. Phone looks really good, too. Yeah. The other thing is, and I'm curious what your thought was on this as well. Early on, I think there's a prank that goes wrong. Because remember in that one room and you see what looks like hair hanging down? And someone's like, oh my gosh, is that hair? And they kind of quickly like get everyone out of the room. Yeah, I think and that like, was... No a... one's going to address the fact there was hair just hanging down. Mm-hmm. Like, I couldn't figure out what happened. They were like, was this supposed to be... I think it was something that was supposed to drop down or something, but they screwed up their contraption or whatever to... So it's not really off. explained, though, and the people no. that aren't in on the prank, it's like, no one's concerned about the fact there's fucking hair hanging down? Mm-hmm. Like, I would have been very concerned right then yeah. and there. But the other thing is, back to what you were saying about where they actually did it, the actual people that owned the asylum, because I guess it wasn't the government that owned it, it was like a private owner. Yeah, the government wouldn't let them film there, but the private owner, didn't he sue them? Yeah, he sued them, he lost, but he sued them because he felt like that this film would basically make it more difficult for him to resell the building. And I was like, I feel like it might make it easier to resell the building. Yeah, you'll get someone who's like, 
Like really I will into this and or someone's going to use it for like a lot of like, especially at least I don't know if this is big over there, but I would assume it is like tours. Yeah. Like people do tours over here. Like Doug Bradley hosts the one that's the one out in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. If you go there, not always, but on Halloween, I guess he like does a tour he's done of it. in the past. I don't know how often he's been doing it. Yeah. Not lately, probably. But, but previously I know cause I had a chance to go with my older brother and I stupidly didn't go. I don't know what happened. And I regret that. Because that would have been fun. The other, like, with attention to detail, that's something that doesn't really, like, make the movie better or worse or anything like that, but it's just an interesting thing, is the fact that the very ending scene, when you're looking at, like, the live stream. Oh, yeah, the numbers? Yeah, so it's, like, it shows the number of plays, and it was, like, 1,234. Mm-hmm. Had 56 likes, 78 shares, and 910 comments. And if you look at them all together, it's, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. It's a... Much longer combination for my look. <laughs> oh, space balls. <laughs> but with that, I kind of wondered, and tell me what your thought is on this. I realized that was like the number of plays that was like happening right then and there, it seemed like. And people mm-hmm. in the comments, if you translate it, are basically saying like that, oh, this is all stage, this is fake. You know? Yeah. But I kind of wonder, is that saying that's how people are watching now or how many total plays they got? Like maybe... The ghosts were making them think they got more plays than they did. Maybe. I don't know. That's how I was kind of wondering how to interpret that. Because only 56 likes and 78 shares. If it was really up to like a million, you think there'd be more shares and more comments and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So, because they were at like 900 plus thousand when he went to run in. There was like today's show comments flying down. So, like, yeah. So maybe the ghosts were, the spirits to hear were, were messing with them. Yeah, that's kind of what I wondered, because, of course, you know, their fate's unknown, because at the end, they get, like, drugged through, like, the water. I think they're toast. Well, no, I think they're toast, too. I think they all got possessed, and they're just now, like, spirits among there, but it's not left up to interpretation. We don't see for sure what happens to no. everybody. We just see that they, seems like they get possessed, and, but also with wrapping up with stuff towards the end, the, what were we talking about, like, you know, the stream ending, yeah. is there's what seemed to be, like, a stagnant image of, like, kind of, like, a, what looks almost like something out like Ringu with the girl just like sitting there and all of a sudden she just stands up Mm -hmm. and like that was just I was just like nope again nope yeah this is a lot of moments of nope within it but for me great job of the creepy factor yeah 100 percent. and the funny thing is Lee Sung Woo actually quit acting after this film interesting well I guess it was going out on the high note or a terrified one I I mean maybe the movie scared him enough that he's like you know what nope I'm done maybe but I, I still say he's going out on the high note. Oh, he's still going out on the high note. Good night. Good night, everybody. You got to have your Seinfeld jokes. I do, and I didn't think I was going to be able to cram any into this, but yet I got two. So. Congrats. All right. Want to move on to our ratings? Yes, though I will say one other thing before we get into our ratings is that I do love that at the very end, one of the last things you see, they had put out some holy water and you just see it fucking boiling at the end. Yeah, that was cool. I loved that. But yeah, let's get on to our ratings. So to start out, we have our skull rating. The overall is a film. What you thinking? I will give this a four out of five. It's really, really close to being higher. You know, there's minor little quips here and there, but overall, this is this is the standard bearer for this genre. And I don't. There's little things that could have been done a little better at times, but again, that's really splitting hairs. Overall, this is a classic movie that everybody who is has any interest in a like haunted location kind of film should check this out. Yeah, if you like found footage films, you're gonna love this. I'm actually gonna go the full five out of five on this one. Rock on! I I just I got such a kick out of it. I loved it. And for scary factor, I'm gonna give it the the four out of five because while the entire movie didn't scare me, like obviously the very beginning is actually kind of fun. Yeah. They were like, just them getting out. to know each other. Or yeah. Stuff like that. And yeah. there's some funny parts throughout it, but man, just like once the scares happen, fuck. Yeah. What are you thinking for scares for our little I will scary s- cat emoji? I will say four out of five as well, because I don't get super scared in a lot of movies. And I, like you said, I usually kind of chuckle my way through it. There was a couple of times I had to really chuckle my way through a few things. Yeah. And I think this brought some really genuine dread and i think they did a fantastic job of making this movie one that sticks with you far after you've watched it i've seen that face and that sound in my head before after this seeing this movie a couple times not a pleasant experience no let me tell you so for music and sound what you gonna think there's there's not a lot of music in this but 
But I think sound design should count for something. Exactly. Sound design is, especially in a, in a found footage movie, I think, where there's a lot of really quiet moments, your sound design is going to drive your movie home. It's, mm-hmm. it's either, it could make or break it. And I think the sound design helped make this movie what it is. I, the sound was brilliant. Every single part, you felt it. I'm giving a full five for sound and sound design. Yeah, I'm going to do the same because, like you said, that plus the the face that oh my god that, that whisper just gets in my head and just oy vey. Is it, they're very good. I've noticed with like again Korean and Japanese horror with stuff that has scary sounds. You know, from like John the death rattle sound, yeah. like that stuff just wakes me the fuck out. So yeah, five out of five for both of us on that. And then what about effects? Our little happy ghost emoji. Effects. There's some really good effects in this. I'd say, is it perfect on effects? It's close. It's absolutely close. And there's a lot like the arm pulling in and the way the, like when they're in room 402 and that the way that guy, that guy's body's moving is very slightly and stuff like that and the effect of the yeah. girl with the black eyes mm-hmm. i mean and the way they did all of the camera setup and the camera work because a lot of this was like the elaborate setup of cameras they had planted up in this asylum and the way they jumped between them and everything and the way they're able the body cams and the face cams and stuff like that they're able to transition between those to give a lot of different perspectives and those different perspectives really help weave this together so i would say it's really a five for me on that scale yeah i'm gonna give i'm gonna bump it down to a four a little bit just because i think that while it's really good, it's nothing super groundbreaking either. It just it was very it, they did very well with what they had. Yeah, I think it was genius in its simplicity. No, it absolutely was, but I, I think I still I just can't give it a full five. But yeah, I'm with you. It's close. It's very close. Now gore is tough because I don't think there was really much like any gore just about. I'm trying to think like there's a few moments that you kind of anticipated something really funky happened, but you didn't really see it. Yeah, like, well, the scene where you I mean, like, the scratch. His... The girl's getting scratched yeah, up a bit. Scratch. But, yeah, gore factor, honestly, I'm going to give that a one. Yeah, I'm going to do the same, because they're really scratch on the arm. I mean... This is a psychological movie, not yeah. a physical horror movie as much. I mean, there has physical things that are horrifying, but it's not going for the blood and guts and gore. Yeah, I don't, and I don't consider things that are scary movement-wise. I consider that under, like, the effects and the scariness Agreed. of it, not... Gore has to be, like, visceral. It has to be blood, guts, yeah. something. We're almost trying to give a warning here <laughs> yeah. of how, how much, uh, if you can't take like this kind of thing, how much can you take? Yeah. Don't worry. You're not going to get grossed out. Yeah, there's no movie. gross out. There's just unsettling unnervingness throughout yeah. all of it, which I love because yeah. I feel like so many things rely so much on the blood and guts aspect to try to make that the horror, and this didn't, and I think it deserves all the praise in the world for that. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred, you don't need it. Probably even more so than that. Yeah. If you hit the psychological note, you've got me. Yep. At least that's for us. I know everyone's different, but for us, that's definitely top notch. Yep. That is where the chef's kiss comes in. I, so. I think with that, I mean, I can't think of anything else I want to say. Anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? No, I think I'm good. Check it out. This will not be a waste of your time. No, certainly not. And let us know how you think. Yeah, I'd love to hear. I mean, well, I know a lot of people I suggest this movie to that went nuts over it. So yeah. this one comes Sp- highly recommended. Spread the good word. This yes. is a movie that deserves all as much eyes on it as possible. Spread the good word. This movie has ho- holy water that boils. Indeed. But it so, won't give you boils. Nope. At least I hope not. That'd be bad. Yeah. But so with that... Thanks for listening to our ridiculous ramblings. Until next time, this has been We All Pod Down Here. I'm Brittany. And I'm Dan. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Our logo was designed by Emmanuel Arroyo. Our website is weallpoddownhere.com. Email us at weallpoddownhere at gmail.com. And you can follow our shenanigans at we all pod on twitter and at we all pod down here on instagram and facebook and feel free to suggest a movie you want us to review or if you just want to suggest something to make me really uncomfortable be afraid be very afraid <laughs>